Hi, Ryan from CarsAndDiction.com. Today it's going to be a bit different from our usual. That's because I found this awesome catalog from 1998. Um, basically, it's the Malta Motoring Annual 1998. And it has all the cars available in Malta 20 years ago, together with some prices here at the back. Um, kind of cool to see the prices and old adverts. In Malta, we used to have the Malta Motoring Annual Trade Fair in Nashar. Um, it used to be held at the trade fair grounds, the old trade fair grounds in Nashar. And every agent of every car manufacturer used to, you know, come to this um, event. Um, this is the layout of the the trade fair back then. That's the face aid. It still exists actually. And every agent used to display the cars for that year. Um, back then the internet wasn't mainstream, so what happened is, you know, it gives the agents the means of promoting all the cars that were in that lineup during that year. And this year is 1998. Like you notice, um, every advert, there's no email, no website, obviously no Facebook, no nothing. So, 20 years ago, guys. Here we have a list of people, I mean companies. Um, attending to this fair in 1998 let's go through this old advert now um, back then in Malta we used to have Maltese Lira now these days we have euros so anything we say during this uh, video we'll have to translate in one Maltese Lira to 2.33 euros yeah Prices of parking back then. So, if that's fifth, that's about twenty-five cents an hour times two point three three. You used to get six, charge sixty cents an hour back then. Over here we're seeing how much uh, the government used to charge to import a vehicle into Malta. Here's the uh, charges for the new cars and here's for the used cars. Now back then, um, over here we can see that the cars are determined to be a luxury item and taxes on them are destined to be continuous. Meaning um, any cars over 2 liter basically used to co cost an arm and a leg to import. If I'm not mistaken, uh, these are the minimum amount that they will charge. So if you have, say, a Toyota Supra, that will be over 2.5 cc. The minimum the government will charge you to import that just to get the Maltese plates on the car will be 23,000 euros. Now, assuming that the car does not, you know, jump a certain amount of value, because over here we're seeing that the the government will charge you 82% of the value or at the minimum of 10,000 euros whichever comes uh, most so that's why we don't see a lot of old cars in Malta that are over 2 litres in um, engine capacity um, if we go up to 1.5 that was only 2.264 2.26 2264 times 2.33 about 5200 euros to register that vehicle still expensive but not as much as the high capacity engines same uh, goes for the new cars just a different rate so again the government used to charge on, according to how much the car costs so 55% on something up to one to one liter for diesels same over here for petrol etc 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 82 percent for something over three liters or if the if that value of 82 percent doesn't exceed 10,000 euros the government would charge you a default of 10,000 euros a bit insane if you tell me um, but that's why cars were expensive back then just because of this government registration scheme go through this if you ever see a um, company that's you know that belongs to you or you know who it might belong to feel free to tag them in the video um, 
if you'd like to see more of this or something from your country, um, I really have some, some information for the UK and the US, so I could see, do a similar video for this. Here are some cars from back then. We got the Alfa Romeo lineup. I guess they include all the cars because over here we're not seeing a regular 3 Series. Um, like again, um, cars over 2 liters were very scarce. Like there's an exception here of a BMW 5 Series. Some cars are not that much known out of uh, Europe, such as the Daewoo or Fiat, but you know, they were very popular back then. This is the year that Punta came out and replaced the Uno. The last year of the Ford Escort Mark VI when the Ford Focus comes in the lineup. Wow, the Ford Transit Mark III was still bought, you know, be able to be bought new. Hyundai's really started to get popular with this model, the Accent. Jaguar XJ. I can tell you for a fact that these can come in uh, even these days, 20 years ago, you know, from 20 years ago, they're still alive. I guess, you know, this is built on the Mazda 121, if I'm not mistaken. And these cars, the Jeeps, um, obviously they don't come anything less than two liter, are so very rare. I think they're only like a handful in Malta. We got the Kia. Um, these used to be really cheap, the Kia Mentor. I think this is the first Kia to come ever come out. Um, haven't seen one in ages, unlike the Hyundai we've seen. Accent, these are still popular, but the Kias, I haven't seen them in, you know, around. I guess they all broke down. Um, Lada's, very popular back then, so cheap, built like a tank. Based on a Fiat chassis. Uh, if you're tourist in Malta, you're gonna see plenty of these. Basically, for a 1.3 engine, you get a you know proper 4x4 vehicle which is really needed in Malta with all the potholes we have. These two cars I really remember from Gran Turismo. Remember the Mazda Lantis, it's 323F over here. I've got the Mercedes lineup, the first, uh, actually I think this is the first convertible that ever came up with a retractable hardtop. There's no way that you're gonna see a Nissan Skyline or Sylvia unless it's, um, you know, pre-ordered, special order by some someone with money because obviously it's gonna be cost a lot according to the graph we saw before. Actually, the real car, the only real interesting car we've ever seen here is, well, yeah, this BMW Z3. Uh, if you're an Alpha fan, you can remember the 156. Nothing that much really. Um, you know, we did have Peugeots, 106 and 306, 406, 806. I think there was a 605 as well in between here. Um, I do not remember if any Rally editions or GTI editions were officially imported in Malta. I could be wrong. The not lineup had the Clio. Uh, do you remember the Magan Cabrio, designed by Pininfarina? Same designers of Ferrari. Cute car then, back then. And doesn't look that old these days. Gotta say that. Subs got first uh, Land Rover to break out from the usual Defender boxy shape. So we got the free Land Rover there. We got Skoda Felicia. I think back then they were still a group on their own, not on their Volkswagen. Um, yeah, you might have heard of this make. Uh, I cannot pronounce it. Sasanyong. 
I know they have a Mercedes engine, so it's not all bad. Got the unusual looking Wagoner. We got Tata as well. Haven't heard, haven't seen a new model in ages. These are really common though. And we've got Corolla. And Starlet, Paseo, the Toyota lineup basically. Um, I know the MR2 used to be sold, so over here, but I guess, you know, in 1998 it's top production, I'm not sure. So they didn't bring it here. Again, you're not going to see a Supra or any, you know, high performance vehicle over here. This show used to be for the family, outgoers on Sunday, and people, you know, who are looking for a family car. Um, if you really wanted a performance car, you would have actually went to the dealership directly and special ordered it. So we had the Toyota and Volkswagen. Golf Mark IV, Passat, Polo Classic. These days the Polo does not come in sedan format, only hatchback. Yep, so that's it. Here we have some off-roading, I guess, statistics from the 1998 championship or 1997. Some people want some trophies. If you're in this photo, feel free to tag the person. Here's a 1997 championship results for the off-road. If you see a friend's name or whatever, feel free to share it with him. Yeah, cool. The Peugeot Club. Here. Some information. 30 active members, total members of 75. Eight meetings so far. In one year that's not bad hill climbing uh, um, hill climbing is popular in Malta reason is we don't have an official race circuit it, it's been promised with a lot of governments but never came about hill climbing is the most sought after by the racing enthusiast in Malta the only way you can actually race in Malta some results again Popular cars back then, Fiat's, Escort's, Fiesta's, oh, there's a lot of Zalan. Another Fiat, Minis, and Imp. Cool, Honda Civic. We see Hondas in this magazine. No, we didn't. I know for sure the agent used to exist. I guess they didn't make the print. We'll see if I can come up with you know, some prices for 1998. Yeah, if you see someone you know, feel free to tag them. While you're at it, you know, don't forget to subscribe below for any of our latest videos. Okay, so here we've got some prices for the cars in Malta. Now these prices again are Maltese Lira, so one Maltese Lira is 2.33 euros. So let's take example the 156 VS model, 2.5 liter. That would have cost you 14,363 times 2.33. That would have cost you about 33,400 euros brand new. That car. Got some Audis right over here. Roughly the same you know, price range. Now, Audis are seem to be more expensive than the Alphas. We have nothing with the same engine capacity over here. Maybe the 1.8. Again, not nowhere near. It's already about 5,000, 6,000 euros more than the Alpha 156. I guess Alpha may have been shipped from Italy, might be, have been cheaper from Germany. 
Marble Alfa Romeos, Asia Motors, same company as Kia. We've got the Audi A8 V6 model, 30, a whopping 35,500. That is about 70, 70 something thousand euros. That was an expensive vehicle. Wonder how much they depreciated these days. We got the 318 IS Coupe, nice basics for a project car. Most of them are project these days. 17,500 euros. How much is that? 17,500 Maltese Lira, sorry. That cost the, the new owner 41,000 euros. So any one of you running a 3180 S Coupe, you have to appreciate the new owner put about 41,000 euros into that to buy a brand new. That's a lot of money. Um, wow, the CSI made it over here. How much is that? 69,900, shit. 69,900. That has to be over 150 grand. Well, the BMW 850 CSI, 162,000. That is a lot of money. Even the Z3, um, you know, for the four cylinder version, the 0.9 liter engine, that is a lot of money. 40, 42,000 euros, something about that. That is a lot of money. You have the Citroën Saxo, really popular car back then. Not that much, under 10,000 euros for a new Saxo. Very economical, I guess. The parts are cheap. We did have the Dacia back then. There you go. Very popular because, again, it was cheap. Daewoo's cheap. Ford Escort, you won't see the cause word over here. So nothing that much interesting. Usually family cars. Here we go, some Hondas. Accord would have set you about 15,000 Maltese pounds, about 33,000 euros. Had the, okay, Honda Prelude. No wonder there's not that many. Not a special car at that and a bit expensive to buy, 40,000 euros. Would you have a 2.2 VTEC Prelude or rear wheel drive Z3? You know, for a bit more. Hyundai's, again, I told you these, got, these cars were really popular. Prices were really priced well. Zuzu Trooper, off-road vehicle, and uh, you know, nice four-seater, popular here as well. Price is, I guess, reasonable for an SUV for those days. Told you the Wrangler. Now you're gonna really laugh if anyone's seen this from the US. 2.5 Wrangler Sport, the bottom of the range, would have cost us 15,299 Maltese Vera. That is about 36,000 euros for a Wrangler. No wonder there's not many of that. And then the price just goes up, like for the, uh, again, 2.5 Grand Cherokee, 27,000 euros. That's about 27,000 Maltese Lira. That is about 60,000 euros. For a Grand Cherokee, the 2.5. And then price just jumps up for the 4 liter version. No wonder people went for the Kias and Ladas back then. Got the Freelander. It was a popular vehicle back then, you know. Nice shape for then. Um, here are the prices. Oh, we had the Discovery as well. We didn't see that. So, there it is. Freelander was more expensive than the Discovery. I wonder why. Uh, the Maruti, Mazda. Got the Mercedes. Got the SLK, how much was that? Twenty-six thousand nine hundred. Really, really expensive. 
Oh, we got an SL500 as well. 68,000. Wow, look at these prices. That's about 200,000 euros right over there for an S600 Coupe. So, would you rather have the Mercedes or the BMW 850 CSI? So expensive. Nissan, like I said, not so much, not anything that much interesting. You got Opels. Some places are called Vauxhalls. Peugeot, do we have any interesting models here? Nothing. Okay, we got the Porsche box there. There's a missing S over there. 33,000 euros. Ah, 33,000 Maltese Lira. That's about 70,000 euros. Give or take. That's a lot of money. 70,000 euros for a box there. These days, you can, I guess, you can buy a Cayman. And these are the early models, I guess, the one with the orange egg yolk lights. Rover. There you go. Sub. Seat. Skoda. Toyota. Okay, see, MR2, we just didn't have the photo. 17,200, wow. Uh, not bad priced over there. You know, 7,200, that was 40,000 euros. Again, back then you would have compared it to maybe an SLK or a Z3. So, you know, these cars are appreciating as well, so... Whoever, you know, kept it immaculate might be getting their prices back. Volkswagen and Volvo. And over here we have the commercial vehicles. Now, the commercial vehicles, I know they are over 2 liter, but the prices are lower because the government had another scheme for commercial vehicles, like vans or pickups, that they don't pay much as the passenger vehicle, so... If you ever come to Malta, you know that commercial vehicles are really popular, especially the Hilux. You know, you can have a four-seater Hilux and register it as a commercial vehicle and just pay, you know, peanuts for that. Compared to, you know, a non-commercial vehicle like the Land Cruiser, around with the same kind of engine, which would be around 40,000 euros, about 20,000 Maltese, and Hilux right over here would have been half the price. So, no wonder there's plenty of them. Okay, we got some services over here. I wonder how many are still left in operation. Well, that's it. If you really like this video, feel free to subscribe. And, you know, comment below. Oh, what do I have here? I uh, guess I asked the showroom back then how much were it for in Toyota Paseo is. The only reason I would want to go for a Paseo is, you know, back then I was like 18, starting out and no money. So, <laughs> limited options. So, yeah, that's it. The Motor Motoring Annual 1998. Thanks. So I did went to look see if I have any Honda material. This is just a bonus for this video. We went to check. Um, I guess this is 1998. We got the CRV at 14,800. Again, Maltese Lira two, two euros is 2.33. 35,000 euros for a CRV. The leader all wheel drive model specs given back then. Got the specs for the Civic, no prices for the Civic. On the HRV, price of 
price for the HRV, 11.5. Obviously, HRV back then was the two door CRV model with the smaller engine. So obviously it would be a bit cheaper. Lovely Civic. Some people kill for like a zero miles Honda Civic, including me. Don't forget about the Civic. Maybe we might have some prices in here from a catalog we got back in the showroom in 1998. No prices. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. So that is 8,300. So about 20,000 euros for the 1.4 model. Yep, the 1.4 model. And the VTI will have been about 4,000 more, 10,000 more, 10,000 more euros, 30,000 euros. Yep, the 1.6 VTI, that basically is the 1.6 VTEC for disc brakes and all the extras, bells and whistles. Even the, you know, five spoke wheels. So that's how much the Hondas were back then. Thanks for looking at the Multi Multi Train Animal 1998. Feel free to subscribe below and comment. Thank you.